All right, we want to bring you tonight's original with in-depth reporting on a topic we've been keeping an eye on in Ukraine. Today, the last power transmission line connecting the Zaporizhia nuclear plant to Ukraine's power grid got disconnected after intensive shelling. That's according to the energy company that runs the plant. Also, four members of a team of nuclear experts left the plant today and the energy minister saying repairs cannot be done right now because of fighting happening around the plant. And in the midst of all of this, war. And you still have civilians, regular people, just trying to live their lives. It's especially tough for kids heading back to school who have seen them bombed or destroyed. So now we're seeing organizations working to piece them back together. Megan Fitzgerald has the story. As these girls collect their books and meet their teacher for the first time, reminders that this school year will be different. Just days before classes begin, all the windows are being replaced. The bomb dropped there. All these windows blew out and the kids were in school. Yeah. This is Chernia of Ukraine. It was one of the first places Russian troops invaded from the north. Among the destruction, 27 schools damaged or destroyed, teaching lessons no student should ever learn. They know how, what is the sound of the airplane coming to bombard you. It's horrible that children have to experience it. But that's the reality of growing up in a war zone and why Olga Shizova says it's even more important schools at the very least feel safe even though no place in Ukraine really is. The nonprofit Ukrainian PRISM raised money to restore schools here, even as satellite images from Maxar as recently as last month appeared to show fighting continuing in southern Belarus. Are you fearful that another attack could come? Yeah, it's possible. And many people told us that it's too early to repair the windows uh, because, you know, they may come and break them all over again. These children only have one life and they cannot wait until everything is over and they have to go to school and study now. For those schools that are opening for in-person learning, they are required to have a bomb shelter for the kids. So this shelter, for example, which is right near the Russian and Belarusian border, the administrators here have tried to do everything they can to make it comfortable for the kids. <laughs> for many parents, the decision to send their kids back to school wasn't easy. When the air raid goes off, if we are at home, we'll live on the 17th floor. So we understood that we won't be going down every time it goes off. And in the kindergarten, when this air raid goes off, they go to the basement every time. So if you look up there, this is a brand new roof already. That's the base of it. Michael Capone heads the Florida-based charity Global Empowerment Mission. He showed NBC's Morgan Chesky in July the work his group is doing to repair seven schools outside of Kyiv. One of the most essential tasks is replacing radiators for heat so the kids will be warm. So we are repairing and rebuilding the radiator system for this school and all the different schools. And it's going to be treacherous cold here this winter, even in October. Without something like this, the kids would never be able to be in the school. You would freeze to death even with jackets on. As they live through a war that teachers say will shape their lives and the generation to come. Are you happy to be back at school? Yes, of course. Uh, especially our children are very happy because uh, they uh, had a long uh, period when they didn't have an opportunity to sit at the desks, so face to face with their teachers. And now we are very happy. And Megan um, is joining me now. Astounding to think about the reality for so many of these kids and parents having to return to school um, during a war, thinking about their safety as well amidst all of that. I know just over half the schools, Megan, in Ukraine, the reopening to in-person education. What else are you hearing from teachers there about how they're planning to kind of ease students um, into the school year and also online as well where it's needed? Yeah, well, Hasman, you know, this is a very sensitive and uh, critical situation here because we're talking about kids who have been traumatized, many of whom, as you saw there, were in school, others at home when uh, these bombs bombarded their community. And so teachers are creating a space for these kids. There's mental health services available. They're allowing them to share their feelings through art, through painting, um, speaking about it, uh, as well as, as through song. All of this to try and put the reality of war on the back burner as these kids try and learn this school year. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.